<laughs> they don't think about that at all. And it kills me. <laughs> so let's say that we're gonna cook two chicken breast pieces to the exact same internal temperature, right. but start them at completely different times um, so that we have one that goes in hot and cooks for a shorter amount of time versus the one that, you know what, we should wait them before we can do that as well. So, so we got 99 grams and 111 grams. Yeah. One's gonna go our, into a cool pan and uh, let's pick a final let temperature. Me, let me what cool are, this pan quickly because it's already smoking. So we noticed that he likes to live dangerously by pouring water directly into the hot pan of oil <laughs> so that it aerosolizes causing third degree burns. Duly noted. Get, what kind of surface temperature do you wanna see? 400? Uh, at least. 450? So it's I okay to put your hands on the chicken and then stick them back on the salt. Okay, I also noted. <laughs> good, good sanitation. What, what's gonna live in the salt here? Nothing's gonna live in the salt at all. It's giving you crap. I think the, the interesting thing is going to be if we cook them both to the same doneness, if we pick a spot center mass mm -hmm. and we decide on a final temperature. 155? It's going to be the comparison of weight of moisture loss. I'm going to hypothesize that there's going to be more moisture loss out of chicken breast feet. Right, because we're cooking at a higher temperature the whole time. Surface to mass ratio. Reading 161 oh, really? center mass. Okay. The number two is, of course, way down from that. Da -da -da -da. 78 grams. I'd say it's I about 78% given that we started with, with basically 100. But it's not exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you want to play all loosey-goosey with the facts, that's your business. 78.78, okay. This is, this is primary research, man. We're in here on McGee territory. Are we close to the same temperature? Yep. It's too bad they don't make chicken breasts in completely uniform We're working sizes. on it. <laughs> We're working on it. 84.68%. I was guessing that the piece that went into the colder pan right. would, because of its reduced surface area, maybe retain more moisture, but indeed there is a relationship between time and moisture loss. Uh -huh. So I mean, the piece that went into the hot pan stayed moist. Right. In order to quantify anything that's going on with your food, you've got to have measurements. Yes. Now, ideally we would have been measuring time. Right. We didn't, but not only did we weigh things, we weighed things digitally in metric. In metric, yes. And we took careful temperatures, not only of the pan, but of the food. So mm -hmm. we've got three data points. But this right. is still a pretty big trend. Mm -hmm. 80, 84.68% uh, versus 78.78%. That's not, yeah, it's not insignificant. Lunch, right. lunch is up. <laughs> this is enough to feed like six girls then, from New York. Think, well, it's impossible to say without bias because I know that this one lost more moisture, but. I noted no difference whatsoever. Nope. So what we've learned is that it freaking doesn't matter. Start with a good bird and don't mess it up. Here's the other thing. Food tastes better if you're hungry. And meat is more tender when you're hungry because you produce more saliva. Uh-huh. As Cervantes said, hunger is the best sauce. <laughs> <laughs>